Korean society started to take child abuse seriously in 1999 after the Shinne case came to light. Shinne, who had cancer, was neglected by her parents. After this case in 2000, the acts of abandonment and neglect were officially recognized as child abuse and punishments for such acts were established. It was the first time that Korean society intervened to deal with a serious issue of child abuse. The Shinne case, which was made known in 1999 and ended in 2002, continues to shock and distress the country, even to this day. The poor young girl was born to devout Christian parents in 1990, and she died after a short life in May 2002. Today, we will take a deeper look into the Shinne case. Kim Shinne's story was shared with the world via the show Unanswered Questions on August 21st, 1999. It all started with a tip-off by Dr. Kim Hyun-ju of Aju University Medical Center. Kim, who is now the head of the Korean Foundation of Rare Disease, met Shinne at a hospital. Shinne was hospitalized from the young age of four because of kidney issues. Dr. Kim said Shinne stood out because of her parents. Shinne's mother didn't take her daughter to the hospital due to religious reasons and neglected her illness. But she admitted Shinne into Aju University Medical Center in July of that year after her health rapidly deteriorated. But Shinne's father, who had parental authority, forced the hospital discharge of his daughter because of his religious beliefs. When Dr. Kim saw this, she requested help from a broadcaster so that Shinne could continue to receive treatment. According to Dr. Kim, Shinne was diagnosed with Wilms tumor, a type of childhood cancer, in 1995 when she was five years old. For Wilms tumor, with treatment at stage four, the cure rate is over 80%. For Shinne, the cure rate would have neared 90% if she removed the tumor and received treatment, especially because the tumor was detected very early. But even with the discovery of the tumor, Shinne's parents left their daughter alone for nearly four years, saying she would be cured through the power of their faith. After Dr. Kim's tip-off, Unanswered Questions program director Park jung Song met with Shinne and was overcome with shock. Shinne, who was nine years old at the time, had a lean figure as if she was starving and had a stomach like a pregnant woman. She weighed only 20 kilograms and had a five kilogram cancerous tumor inside of her. At the time of the broadcast, Shinne's abdominal circumference was 85 centimeters or 33.5 inches thicker than the waist measurement of an average adult male. That wasn't the only thing that was shocking. The nine-year-old complained about her pain, telling her parents, it hurts, I can't stand it any longer, I'm in too much pain. In response, her parents said, don't tell us, tell God, and did nothing. Shinne's parents were introduced as people who made their nine-year-old daughter suffer unnecessarily because of faulty religious views. Her parents even rejected the production team when they tried to persuade them to send their daughter to the hospital to receive treatment. Shinne's father apparently had a revelation that God would cure his daughter. He even said he would be willing to die with her. He rejected conversations about the issue, saying it would be useless to take her to the hospital to see a doctor. The production team thought the parents believed in a pseudo-religion and visited the church they attended. The team suspected the parents were Jehovah's Witness believers. That's because this Christian denomination believed in the refusal of military service and blood transfusions. But the production team found out that members of the church themselves tried to make Shinne's parents take their daughter to the hospital for a long time. Basically, the parents had their own set of religious beliefs. Shinne's father apparently quit his job after he became religious. At the time, Shinne's mother, who was pregnant, was supposedly more focused on religion than having a baby. Shinne had two younger siblings, but their mother didn't make any effort to take care of them either. 
Shinez's mother told her daughter that God will come this year and told her to endure. Life was so hard for Shinez that she even told her parents to kill her. Pastor Kiminte, who led the Shalom Hospice mission at the time, also tried to persuade Shinez's parents, and they requested the production team seek out ways to get them to send their daughter to the hospital. The team sought out legal ways to get Shinez treatment, but it wasn't easy. In 1999 in South Korea, parents had ultimate authority over their children. Not even the country could step in to block the actions of parents. Shinez's father and mother could have been deprived of their parental rights, but there was no president at the time. According to Section 1 of Article 20 of the Constitution then, in a country where religious freedom is guaranteed, no external force can go against the religious beliefs of those with parental rights. There was also the issue of whether Shine would be able to endure the long legal process as her health continued to deteriorate. Shine faced an urgent situation. As soon as her unbelievable story hit the airwaves, donations poured in and the entire country started a campaign to save her. The production team sought out ways to help Shine by visiting district offices, city halls, the Health and Welfare Ministry, and the National Assembly. People also approached Shine's parents and eventually persuaded them to let their daughter go to the hospital. They changed their minds again and again, and finally the pastor in charge of their church blocked them. The scene of transporting Shine to the hospital was like a 007 operation. Then President Kim Dae-jung, who watched the broadcast, said this was a case of parents' religious convictions clashing with the right to life of their children. The child welfare law, which was pending at the National Assembly, was quickly pushed through. President Kim ordered officials to come up with fundamental measures to prevent such cases from happening again. Two months later, the National Assembly passed a revised child welfare law. This provided safeguards that would limit parental rights in similar cases to Shinez so that children in need of medical attention could receive treatment with the consent of their parents. While Shinez's parents allowed their daughter to be treated, they refused any kind of surgery. Shinez received treatment like an adult, without any groaning due to the pain. But her parents continued to be stubborn, and this created negative public opinion. Hoik Bum, who was the head of the public security department at the prosecution at the time, threatened to book Shinez's parents as suspects of child abuse if they didn't agree to the persuasion and limit their parental rights. Ho, who was known to be a devout Christian, summoned a prosecutor in charge and Shinez's parents. Ho successfully persuaded the parents, saying that God could cure the disease through the hands of doctors and received a signed surgery consent form. Shine, who didn't even have the energy to write her mother a letter while she was receiving treatment at the hospital, apparently welcomed her father when he came to visit her with open arms and without any resentment. It was determined that Shine could have surgery safely at the end of November of that year, after the tumor shrunk from receiving cancer treatment. Professor Song Gyu, the doctor in charge delivered the hopeful news that Shinez's waist measurement decreased to 77 centimeters from 84 centimeters after cancer treatments, adding the surgery would be more than 70% successful. Nurses also said Shinez had a strong will to live. After a few complications within some five months of being hospitalized, Shinez had a successful surgery at Samsung Medical Center on November 22nd. The operating surgeon said Shine could have a normal life if she received regular treatment for about a year. A year later, after her surgery, there was news that she had put on some weight and was starting to go to school again, making the entire country happy. But three years after her surgery in 2002, the show revealed that Shine passed away earlier that year in May, one week before the Korea-Japan World Cup started. Even after she received cancer treatment and had a successful surgery, Shinez's parents refused further treatment and forced her to be discharged from the hospital, saying that prayer would cure her. They didn't track how her cancer was progressing or take her in for a checkup. 
they just neglected their daughter and abandoned her at a prayer center. A civic group, which was formed from donations for Shine, got a restraining order for her father, and Shine's mother and younger siblings were sent to a shelter. At the end of 2000, Shine's father committed suicide. Her mother was diagnosed with aphasia due to shock, and her younger siblings were sent to orphanages. You could say that her parents received retributive justice, but it's unfortunate what happened to their children were blameless. Cancer recurred in Shine, and a few weeks before she died, a program director visited her in the hospital. She is said to have only stared at the hospital wall during the visit and didn't look at the program director in the face. She couldn't trust anyone after being betrayed by her parents. This case showed parents who were unqualified to be parents, as well as them ruining the lives of their children. Child abuse is taken seriously in the United States, and if this kind of case arose there, the parents would have been deprived of their authority and not given a second chance. That fact makes this case so regrettable. Parental rights were maintained, even with the intervention of the entire country, including the president. Shine, who died at the age of 12 in 2002, would have been 33 years old today if she had a normal life. Due to her case, the child welfare law was revised in July 2000 to include abandonment and neglect. But people are still passive about depriving parents of authority in South Korea, even to this day. We hope there will never be a case like Shinez here ever again. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.